Do we have a sound? Do we have a sound? Are we real? Is this is real this life? Real? Is this real life? <laughs> that kid was from Gainesville. I think that was shot in Gainesville. <laughs> David did no, no, sound English. We have sound. Oh, we're good. Hello. Oh, look at that. We have sound. This new format is amazing. That new format is amazing. <laughs> uh, but you can always blame me, as always. I'm Benny Torres. This is the Dungeon Defenders 2 Devstream 64. Woo! We are 64 bits. The That's Ocarina of Devstream? Ocarina of Devstream. Super Devstream 64. This is uh, Java Hawk. And El Dorito, Lord El Alandrian. Lord El Alandrian. Uh, what you saw there was <laughs> no sound first. Uh, before that, we saw some of the Herald of Embermount challenge participants. Uh, we're going to get to the winners a little bit later. A couple of things before we kick into this we're really excited about. Certainly the new dev stream, you know, continuing to evolve that kind of stuff. Uh, we, our contest is actually, there should be a link in the chat right now, a uh, new contest sort of way of being. So no hashtags, no worries about that. Save the Twitch chat for blaming me and for asking questions. Uh, we have Java here looking at live at the Twitch chat. Yep. Uh, you might be noticing some already some changes here as Eric is booting into the game because he is actually booting from uh, one of the older uh, campaign revamp branches that we have. So this is uh, something that's coming uh, soon, and this is what we're talking about today, which is our campaign refresh, campaign revamp, uh, all the sort of things that speak to freshness and amazingness. I am I'm pretty sure that this build is in a really bad state, so <laughs> as, as long as you don't hot swap, I think you'll be fine. <laughs> Tr yeah. trust, trust that uh, things are going to be a little bit more polished, and they already are more polished, but this is the, the build that we're playing now of our new campaign revamp. So you're already seeing uh, we have these beautiful new loading screens with a little bit of story and stuff. Uh, and so we're going to give you some previews on this campaign revamp organized by sort of theme. So the first sort of theme is kind of not necessarily new player experience, but broader player experience tweaks. Uh, and the first sort of category of things that we want to talk about is the fact that we've got some better beginnings, some better uh, beginnings of the game. So you saw some of that there in the um, game browser. So what tweaks do we have for the game browser, Java? So we have actually, it's, it's sort of a, it's sort of a, a wide gamut of experience, user experience changes that are going to affect the entire flow of the game. Um, we've revamped uh, the matchmaking screen to give you a little bit of, of a better context of what you're going to be playing. Uh, but part of, part of the goal of this milestone is to really try to get players to play through the campaign and to play our game and to forward face a little bit less of the monetization uh, and to be a little bit more accessible overall for players. So one of the things that we're trying to do uh, is we're going to be revamping the main menu. Uh, we're going to be showing your progress uh, on the main menu uh, as you progress through the campaign. And one of the really cool things that's going to speed things up for you and, uh, and, and remove some of the walls and blockers is we're going to be allowing you to continue your campaign straight from the main menu. So potentially players don't even need to go to the hub. They don't need to do all of these other things. We're not explaining it super well right now. We're going to work on that a little bit. But we're going we're gonna to allow you to jump in and start playing right away. Uh, and continue playing, uh, and uh, it's uh, it's going to be a better it's just going to be a better experience overall. So that's really the focus of this milestone uh, for us. And so part of that is sort of even from before you install the game, which I mean on the dev stream a little bit less relevant. But for anybody uh, that hopefully you're sharing that you're sharing the game, and I, our goal here is that we actually have a, a much more friendly new user experience, so that you guys can share the game. And we can we can increase the health of just the player base in general. But you know the install is much cooler, cleaner, and faster. Uh, we also got a, a brief starter quest that points to the war table and sort of quickly gets you everything you need to know, uh, and then you're off to the races. That's right. uh, uh, so the tutorial even itself, we spun it off a little bit. It's freestanding, accessible off the main menu. Uh, there's even some personality already in some of that polish that we're trying to get to. A lot of what we're trying to do here is make the campaign just more fun, make, make it feel like, you know... Uh, like a storybook. A storybook, yeah. yeah. Uh, one of, some of the words that Java was talking about as we were looking at it, both in the main menu tweaks that we've got going on and just the overall tone is a lot more charming, a lot more just... Uh, 
friendly, a lot more, you know, a lot easier to get through. For, for the veterans of Dungeons and Defenders too, you guys know that we don't really have, uh, we have a lot of like grunts and like sounds and like uh, not a lot of actual voiceover work and charm. You know, we hear a lot of the, we hear a lot of that really charming voiceover work in the uh, trailers and things that we do. So we're going to be pulling a lot of that into the campaign. Uh, when you create a hero, you'll be able to hear a nice blurb about the hero. Uh, and when you are going through the tutorial quests, the knight commander is going to talk to you. Uh, so there's there's a lot of like small polished little tweaks that we're trying to do to encourage players who who play the game to keep playing the game and improve the community. And that's step one, really, uh, for for this milestone. And next milestones focus a little bit more on uh, some of the some of the later later game type focus, right? And just to be clear, when we're talking about milestones, we're talking about uh, a couple, about a month from now or so is when that, right? We, we, yeah, we focus our, our, what we call milestones around sort of six week um, intervals uh, where we have major, major patch updates. So usually the end of a milestone is when we release a hero and we, we, we package that around some other things and that's what we're talking about uh, for, for, for this one. And so that's about four weeks four weeks out from, from today. So one of the biggest things, and I want to get Landry to take on this as a more experienced player, one of the biggest things, uh, we kind of buried the lead a little bit here. We talked about the UI stuff because it was up there already, but one of the biggest tweaks is that all maps now are in a new order and interconnected by an overarching story thread. And that pacing is a lot snappier and more meaningful. Um, and so we've got stuff like story elements certainly appearing on in between the loading screens and on the maps. Uh, but again, we've also got, you know, going through the campaign is not only a lot more fun because of the story and because of how quick it is, but you can get to level 50 in the campaign. And the campaign overall should take about 9 to 10 hours. In our playtesting, we're seeing about 16 hours. But any hero you take through the campaign is going to end up at the very end at level 50. Uh, so as a, ex a more experienced player, what did it, you know, we're kind of in the middle of, the, of a campaign right now. What's it feel like uh, once the, you know, you, you play the campaign revamp versus before? Well, honestly, we're trying to, I mean, obviously the campaign is trying to just be more interesting and engaging overall and be a little less boring. During one of my playthroughs, obviously we haven't ironed out all the kinks yet, uh, but during one of my playthroughs, just trying some new characters and going through uh, the third level, which hopefully we'll get to on stream, or fourth level, the ramparts, in our new order, there's like challenge points now in the campaign that make the gameplay experience just more engaging overall. Um, so that'll be awesome for new players. And then for older players, I mean, we all hated grinding Harbinger forever and ever and ever and ever. And now there's, there's two levels. I won't just like spoil it up front, but people will figure it out. There's two levels now that give a similar amount of XP, but they give a lot more than Harbinger does. So there's going to be like doing actual levels and doing an actual map with actual defending that you'll have to do to level up a character, which, is way, which will be way better and still super fast to level up new characters for existing players. And that's what's really kind of the, the game changer, no pun intended, uh, for the more experienced players is that suddenly now the, camp, the, the, the campaign is more fun, so it doesn't feel like a grind. It doesn't feel right. like you're just going back and, and farming for XP or anything like that. And we're actually hoping that for you more experienced players, this gets all your heroes up to level 50 in a much more reasonable time frame and also a lot more fun. Uh, so going back and sort of, you know, uh, it should feel, we're trying to make it feel not necessarily new game plusy, but at the very least you're not going, ugh, I have to go through all these again, or even just farm, you know, Arbinger. You're actually wanting to see all the maps over, you know, over time. Well, right, you kind of have two main choices now for leveling. You could do four new characters, go through the entire campaign, get them all up to level 50, yeah. or if you are just a fan of kind of just doing you know, a map or two over and over, you can do that too. And there's two kind of optimal maps for getting XP if you prefer just, you know, kind of mindlessly grinding while watching Netflix or something. Yeah. Uh, and I want to be clear, you know, this uh, this milestone again in about, you know, four, uh, four weeks or so uh, is part one of this. So this is kind of our first major step in making it, just going back, taking a look back, taking your feedback, and just making the game overall, making a lot of, tweaks big and small that add up to a much different feel uh, and actually interestingly enough we'll get to our challenge segment uh, a little bit later but our challenge this week actually has to do with that sort of change 
Uh, I just want to make sure I'm hitting everything here. Uh, each map now has less waves, but almost all the maps have more boss-style sort of climaxes as a part of them. Um, and again, uh, the other interesting thing, and it's funny how, how much a small thing changes the whole feel of it. You don't have to go back into town. Uh, between campaign, between right. campaign maps, you literally just go from you know it feels much more unified and cohesive. So if you want to binge watch you know uh, Stranger Things while binge playing the campaign, you can do that without having to like deal with a lot of that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, part of that is, and we can't can we show? I don't think we even have the asset, but like uh, Alandrine was showing me something that you're just gonna have to trust me on the revamped <laughs> main menu. Uh, you can just watch this revamp main menu for minutes <laughs> without, <laughs> without doing anything because it's that cool. Yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about sort of what the vision for that is or give them a teaser? Try to Yeah, there's, there's a lot of reasons why we're doing this. First of all, it's a presentation thing. We want people to feel like this is a, you know, it's a real game. You know, and we're, we, we understand that the first impression is really important, especially for our new users. Uh, we want people to really feel invested in the campaign, and we want players to feel like their time investment in playing the game is is worth it. So, uh, as I said uh, previously, you'll be able to jump into the campaign straight from the main menu as a new player, and where you left off will remind you. We'll show like a nice fly through the map that you're on. Uh, so, the you know I, I've been kind of scouring through the Twitch chat. No, you're not going to have to replay campaign if you've already done and that's that's not that's not what we're trying to do uh, we're trying to make that specific experience better for new players because the the flow for it was a little bit convoluted and we weren't explaining some things or a little you know a few pain points so we're trying to get you in trying to get you playing the game and going to the next map and theoretically you don't even have to you you could you could go through the entire campaign without even yeah, to be seeing, clear, seeing the, the if you've already finished that campaign, that the right. you know, we're not relocking that or anything like that. However, uh, you know, personally, and I would say this as the goofball sort of optimist that I am, the hope is that the changes that we've made are started to make make it so that you want to play the campaign. I get why they're asking, why people are asking, sort of like, do we have to play the campaign? Because it, you know, it hasn't been optimized quite yet. I think this is that first step towards optimization. So part of this is like, please give it a shot just to see, you know, how you feel about it. Another thing that we're doing, uh, which was a personal pain point of mine, was uh, we're removing the what's new screen that when you, when you log into the hub, I think most people probably just close it immediately. We're throwing it out to the main menu. It's going to be a little bit more condensed, uh, something like you'd see maybe in like Rocket League if you guys play Rocket League on console or PC. Uh, so you'll, we'll still keep you up to date on the menu, but we're not going to shove it down your throats when you're trying to play a game. Uh, so that's a little bit uh, more pleasant, I think, uh, for players. Uh, and uh, the other relevant thing that I wanted to talk about was uh, if, if there are heroes that you haven't gone through the campaign entirely with or if you've got friends uh, or people that sort of you know dropped off on the campaign our data we see the data on the back end we see how many people have sort of dropped off on a campaign or, or left the campaign in the middle of it uh, we've remapped the old quest change so that if you're midstream uh, or if you're sort of sub 50 we're gonna put you in a great spot to sort of get to level 50 by the end of the campaign number one and number two at the end of the campaign you are ready for nightmare one done yeah. uh, you are you are geared up and you are sort of powerful enough to sort of take that Challenge now. And also, as part part of the revamp and, and sort of re, re kind of jiggering how we uh, place the maps sequentially, we've we've done it a little bit smarter so that the, the easier maps progress to more difficult maps. Uh, we noticed, you know, we're we're trying to look at our numbers here. We noticed that a lot of players just stopped after sewers because it hits a, com a complexity level that was. Uh, just probably too much. It's not, it's, you know, there, there's a couple other problems with, with some of these maps, but uh, we think that that'll also ease some of the, the pain there too. Uh, the other thing is a lot of things that were previously uh, locked by level are now unlocked. So we just are, are opening up the game a little bit more, making it a little bit more free to explore sort of these subsystems and all these other things. Um, so that includes uh, all NPC shops in the Heroes Marketplace are unlocked uh, at level one, and enhancing pets, relics, blacksmith, right. you know, all of those unlocked. Uh, and then some much smaller things uh, that had an arbitrary level lock are gone as well. So just, again, the goal is a lot, you know, trying to bring big people back in and make a lot more engaging sort of fully featured experience. Um, something a little bit more uh, keyed in on, on our, on our uh, experienced players is as you go through the campaign, again, 
You don't have to, but as you go through the campaign with new heroes, uh, better gear drops and tailored gear at key chapter points. So again, the gear system makes a lot, the gear that gets dropped makes a lot more sense. Um, and this is kind of an interesting one as well, which is the warm-up timers and the game time, the end game timers have been tweaked. Uh, so you don't have to be rushing against uh, a, an arbitrary timer at the end of your game to pick up all your loot. You can take your time, enjoy sort of the scenery, and enjoy sort of. We've, we've been talking about that for like a year now, so I'm finally glad that we got that. Uh, how we the other thing that we sort of uh, missed out on here is that when you win maps in campaign, you get. Uh, defender medals uh, and gems now. So we're anticipating that uh, you're going to easily have about 5,000 defender medals uh, before you jump into Nightmare 1 if you uh, beat the campaign, if you beat all sort of 18 maps. Um, How long does it take to get through the campaign, you think? Uh, about 9 to 10 hours. Uh, if you take your time, if you level up your pets and all that kind of stuff, uh, about 16. Eladrian, has that been your experience? I haven't fully gone through it yet, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Like, I've gone through two-thirds of it, okay. um, but the the build I was playing on ended up getting really broken, so I literally couldn't even <laughs> advance past that, so I got to do kind of like a, a timed run-through of just like face rolling every level. that sounds about right, but, though. But nine to ten hours sounds if you're, if you're If you're a seasoned Dungeon Defenders 1 you know, player, yeah. you understand kind of the strategy, the basic strategy for this game, yeah. and you probably don't lose a lot, you're probably going to get about nine hours through the campaign. The first, I remember, I think it was sometime last week, uh, Alandrian came in with a big smile on his face. Uh, and one of the things you talked about was I that... I don't smile. Well, you know, you, your version of a smile. Mm. Uh, was how, that it's harder. Uh, that it actually felt, the feel of it felt harder. I remember you talking about that. So can you talk just a little bit about that difficulty? Because I know I've seen in our community that a lot of people are like, it's too easy, it's too easy, it's too easy. Uh, you're going to see sort of why we put the ramparts as our uh, next map here. But... You want to go along with that? So it's still easy for me. Obviously. <laughs> but uh, no, it is significantly more difficult. There's, there's added threats. So for instance, this level, hopefully we can watch most of it. Um, but the, the kind of boss threat of this level is introducing you to the Drakens. And you'll get to the Drakens, and it gives you like two Drakens from two directions down the middle. And you think that that's all you really have to deal with. And you're like, OK, I, I have defenses that are handling that. But at the same time, a couple boss wyverns come in, and then you're like, oh crap, all these huge health air units are coming at the same time. I have to like actually be repairing and somewhat repelling the enemies. And the first time I did it, like my first line of walls ended up dying, and then like the rest of my defenses barely held, just with the current, you know, gear that I had on a new character. But that was a lot better than just kind of like, oh, I put all the stuff, I know where to put things, I know the choke points, let me just put my defenses down and then just forget about it, you know? That's what really excited me about it, is to hear, you know, to hear Landrian say that. I know I know how freaking experienced of a player he is, to hear that he had to sort of shift his strategies, and that Ramparts is sort of the first, I wouldn't say spike in difficulty, but it's that first time you felt that. So again, this is what, the fourth? Fourth, fourth level. Fourth yeah. level. So this is four of 18, uh, and in the campaign they only get, we were ordering them specifically to get increasing complexity, increasing difficulty. Um, That's a good point. You said 18. I don't think we mentioned that before. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, the campaign is not 18 maps long. That's why we're talking about that 9 to 10 hour range as opposed to the, yeah. the, the 5 to 6 that some people were probably able to do before. So we pulled in the Betsy Adventure. That's part of the main experience now uh, as well as a few other maps. Uh, so. Yeah, from, I mean, from the highest level, it really is just about making that single player feel a lot more like an RPG journey. And this is the first step towards that. And that's why we're so excited about it, is that like finally we're sort of bundling a whole bunch of things that we've been telling you and wanting to work on and wanting to bundle together that's finally sort of coming to fruition, uh, coming and we're written, you know. The other thing about this big patch is that uh, the reason why uh, th and we're going to get into what's coming on Tuesday. The reason why Tuesday is a little bit uh, lighter than it normally would be is because we want to focus a lot on getting this as polished as possible because when we saw it, when we saw it this week and realized sort of how big a change it felt like, we knew that we wanted to make it as good as possible in terms of polish, 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 um, so that once you guys started playing it, you could fully appreciate all the changes that we made. Yeah, Dungeon Defenders 2 is going gonna, gonna to start to feel different. And that's really, really cool. Uh, and we, we, you know, we really hope that for the players who are returning and the ones who haven't finished campaign, the presentation, from the presentation to the gameplay to the progression is just going to start feeling different and better and solid. 
that's really our goal. So quick, uh, quick recap of what's going on on the uh, unnamed currently, but campaign revamp, campaign refreshes. We're going to have a lot better beginnings with install and tutorials and sort of starter quests. We're streamlining the structure of the campaign and the storyline, so you're going to get a lot more sense for what this world is like and what you're actually kind of doing. Uh, the UI is streamlined, and let me tell you, even just calling it UI streamlining is underdoing it. Uh, the first time I saw some of these sort of UI things that we're doing, I, I gasped a little bit. It just feels a lot more premium, premium a lot more, you know, uh, a blockbuster, triple-A quality. A lot more out of uh, alpha. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Uh, stronger campaign, not just stronger in terms of the mechanics of it, but you will be stronger at the end of the campaign than you normally were, and we hope that the campaign is a lot more engaging, uh, but there's also sort of changes to the viability of the end game where, like, you're not going to... We want to avoid you feeling like you're grinding. We want it to be engaging and fun, but we also want to keep that sort of like, if you want to multitask, you can multitask. Um, and again, that campaign replayability, you don't have to, but our goal was to make campaign replayability <coughs> a lot more fun. Uh, and people who have dropped the campaign in the middle of it come back in, and you know they're off to the races. Well, so, so one of the reasons why we're focusing on that, why we're focusing on getting players through the campaign is because we've looked at our numbers. The community will benefit from more players getting through campaign because we notice that the people who get through campaign stick stick around basically, and that's important for a free to play game. If we can get you know if we can get you really engaged for eight, nine, ten hours, um, you know we really want you to get involved uh, in the community. So a, a game that we know it's a game that you already love or hope that you already love, uh, and we're hoping that all these tweaks make it a game that like you can show other people and they will more immediately quickly see why you love it. Yeah. Uh, and it makes a lot more sense. Uh, cool. So that is sort of what's coming in four weeks. Uh, Alandrin, can you go over what's coming on Tuesday? Sure. So what's coming on Tuesday, uh, we're doing kind of a smaller patch, but it's still a patch with some really good fixes. Uh, build weapons are finally getting fixed. Like some of the build weapons on Nightmare 4 when you're trying to grind out some of the... the I remember thinking like it was the one of the bows and a couple of the other weapons were dropping at like... 620 to 640-ish on, on Nightmare 4, and when you can get stuff like 750 or, you know, 700, it just wasn't, wasn't great. So those have been boosted up to 700. So now the base Nightmare 4 weapons that you get from, like, specific map drops are all the same kind of area of power. They can drop up to 700. I'm not going to say they're, they're not guaranteed to be 700 every time, but you can get 700 weapons uh, now from the unique drops. Uh, incursion weapons are still good, they're still 750. Um, but then they've, we've also kind of changed where some of those drop to, they've been redistributed. Okay. Some will be the same, some are going to be different. Uh, also we fixed loot 2.0 to work for the newer heroes. Yeah. Uh, that was kind of a large complaint, that was one of my large complaints, <laughs> I was like, let's deal with all this useless stuff for my new characters, <laughs> like, what, why am I getting defense power for a gun witch? Like, what does that even mean? <laughs> does that make anything better? No, we, it does not. We contemplated that for we a little bit. Contemplated. It didn't work. Right. <laughs> right. Um, so another change is coming on Tuesday. Fissure kind of got a, a, not a redesign, but a re, uh, uh, reconsidering. That's Lava Mancer. Lava the Lava Mancer. Mancer. Lava so the Lava Mancer's, Mancer's main uh, mana generating ability, the Fissure, before it was kind of it was a free defense essentially. You place it down. You can you know you can have three of them. They do damage. So now we're at least we're adding kind of a mana investment before they do damage. So when you first place them down, they will not do damage. They still generate the little ball to give you mana. But now you have to upgrade them once to add the damage effect to them. So now you have to at least invest a little mana to get a little you know more bang for your buck out of the mana that you're spending. Um, some other things that we're doing is like some a lot of bug fixes. Uh, Earth Shatter Tower has been changed slightly. A little bit of a balance change. It's still single target, but now it's going to do a knock up as well. So you might be able to I don't know combo it with Sky Guards. Not that not the Sky Guards are great yet, but like you know it's just adding a little bit more to it. Uh, and then kind of a quality of life thing for some people that enjoy onslaught is we have halved the amount of enemies and horde waves uh, during Onslaught have, yeah, quote-unquote have, but they're, they're significantly reduced, so they're a halved. lot easier to get through. Hell, hell. Halved. 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 Yes, halved. I, think that's, halved. I halved. think that's how you say it. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Uh, professor from Oxford. Also. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so that's, that's going to make those waves a lot easier to get through and a lot less tedious because they were awful. 
And that was just a ninja fix. A, uh, SRF, our level designer, was just like, I'm just going to put this in there. <laughs> like, this sounds like a good idea. And I'm like, I agree. That's how all Let's good do it. design decisions happen, honestly. It's like, I, I'm really annoyed by this. I'm just going to fix it. Uh, hello, Dan Hadid. Hadid. Uh, any, as we get, as we get Dan in here, uh, is there any questions or any sort of uh, things on the Twitch set that we need to be talking about? Uh, we've got some oh, questions, here's the but moment. This is the this is the moment where you, you oh. first get that little bit of stress. It's like here's two dragon and a wyvern boss at your your garbage can <laughs> level defenses. <laughs> like have fun. I mean, I'm sure he's gonna do it because everything's consolidated pretty well in the middle. But they're pretty beefy. They don't go down super fast. You're he's taking beefy. chunks out of them. You're pretty beefy. I am pretty beefy. <laughs> you are correct. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that wyvern. This is an ocean. That wyvern is not <laughs> fun during this. Like the dragon, you're like, yeah, I got the dragon, no problem. That's like, yeah, but Mr. Wyvern's up there dumpstering your towers. <laughs> yeah. But this is the it. point I was talking about, where it's just it's that little bit of extra pressure on your defenses, a little bit of extra, you know, strong enemies hitting you at the same time, kind of when you're like, oh crap, like look at his wall, it's about to die, and he's repairing it. Yeah, he's not it's like slowly office. not making progress on the repair. He's holding it out well. <laughs> Brave Sir Sir P Tire holding the line, losing almost losing the walls. <laughs> we need to get you he's like so, he's soloing this. He's soloing this, yeah. But that's what I mean, because his defenses are cons he'll probably be fine. He built it correctly. Oh, but, oh, oh no! Oh, Eric. oh, it might be a rip. Blame Benny. Blame Benny. Blame Benny. That w and that wasn't a setup. That was, that's, that was that, not that's, a setup. That is that freaking this hard. Is, this, is this is real life. This is real life. This is real life right now. Uh, and again, this is just the fourth map of 18. And right. the goal is that all these, right. are, we reordered them specifically so that they get more complex and harder as the time goes on. So, Correct. you know, even if uh, you're skeptical. Try. He made it. He made, he's fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. Nothing fine. was on fire. <laughs> Planned. <laughs> Planned. Uh, this, is a, this is a great sort of transition to our, uh, that was challenging. And we've got right. some updates on the uh, HOE challenge. Uh, so the H O E challenge, <laughs> the Herald of Ember Mart challenge. Was that, was that you? Ember that was, Mart? Is that Ember, a new Walmart? Ember, Ember is that the Mart. Lava Man's that's, that's Walmart? Where he gets the okay. Ember Mart. Uh, it. So I was jazzed. <laughs> <laughs> I was jazzed that we had enough uh, submissions to actually do that mm -hmm. super cut in the beginning. So thanks to all the participants, uh, we have a little special. Uh, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we have a little special uh, treat for everybody who participated, but Landry, why don't you talk a little bit about who won and why? Uh, so the winners were Igigma Live 007, <laughs> <laughs> Magical Confetti, Magical and uh, Dukin. Okay. I forgot you were going to do that. Igigma <laughs> won because he was one of the first people to actually do a level besides Dragonfall Gates, yeah. and Gates of Dragonfall, yeah. and because that was like the one that we got the most submissions of, and honestly, it's probably like the easiest incursion to do. So I was like, eh. and your, then your uh, judgment is fair my, but harsh. My judgment is fair but harsh, exactly. And then the other winner uh, was kind of chosen around the office and chosen by our multimedia artist Dukin, who did the uh, Life Root Forest challenge. Okay. So again, one of the other map incursions, not the hardest one, but again, because it was different, we're like. Let's, let's and in, give them... In, in theme, Lava Mancer's theme was balls, HOE, right. and Dukin Fire. felt like, you know... Dukin, <laughs> right, I, I feel guess. Like, I feel like we're hitting on all cylinders here, guys. <laughs> we re really are. Uh, speaking of that, we're going to continue <laughs> We're gonna continue this challenge thing. So, uh, as a little bit of a, uh, I don't know what you would say, a goodbye to our existing campaign format, here is the challenge for y'all. Uh, in two hours, I think we decided? Yep. Uh, two hours, so you only got two hours for this challenge. We want a counter somewhere on the video, and it, no cuts. Uh, straight two hours from a zero eye power hero, uh, original four heroes, get as far as you possibly can in the existing campaign. Uh, and as you might 
have guessed here, we might have a sister challenge once the campaign revamp launches so you can see how much further you can get uh, here. But I like that. for now, this challenge is a bit of a time trial, mm -hmm. uh, kind of like Diddy Kong Racing 64. C64 just like game, that. Just like that. You're racing. Mario Kart 64. You're cards. racing through our campaign. <laughs> you should make that. Let's. Uh, DD2 Are DD2 racing? I'm into it. I play that. Uh, Five so, out of seven. Uh, that's the details. Zero eye power hero, as far as you can make it in two hours. Uh, only the original starting characters. Original starting so characters. The original four. Uh, so that it's kind of a little bit fairer, a little bit. Last time we had a lot of answer one, this time it's open up. Yeah, I just wanted to feature yeah, the non-premium characters. Everyone can try it out. Everyone can record themselves. Wait, you have to stay at zero eye power? No. Oh, okay. But you start you got fresh, to start it's just over. Start a fresh character, get as far as you can That'll in the campaign question. within the two hours. We know it's going to be jankety with like going back to the tavern and rejoining and stuff like that, but that's part of the process that everybody's going to have to do anyway. So it's like, but that's also why we want to see the timer, because we want to see that like you did this straight through. This is how far you got without like any jankity cutting or editing and and let's let's call this one the uh, the TT challenge the time trial challenge sure yeah TT challenge sure yeah that's what I'm going with the TT the TT challenge yeah okay. that's, that's a Diddy Kong racing reference too his name was TT Nobody knows that. I'm, I'm a big old Nintendo nerd. Uh, do the exact same thing you did before, just sort of po post on YouTube, post it in the forums. Uh, post a Twitch VOD, whatever you got. Yeah, whatever you got. We're going to be looking. We were looking all the time, and we were uh, pretty yep. entertained. Uh, again, congrats to the winners uh, of the HOE challenge. Woo! Uh, you want one more? Uh, congrats to the winners of the HOE challenge, and even the participants will get a little special something. A little, little participation. Thank you for participating. <laughs> yeah. Something or other that we custom make. Uh, real quick, uh, after the challenges, it's if you were locked in a dungeon, a dungeon. I can't. Um, the, a gungeon. A gungeon. A dunagon. If you were locked in a dungeon, our last two updates were Molten Citadel and Lava Mancer. They were hot, hot fire. So Molten Citadel, uh, we had a new map, a new incursion, new encounter, and a new weapon. Lava Mancer, obviously a very unique kit. Uh, getting some tweaks on Tuesday, uh, but that, if you were locked in a dungeon, those are been our last two updates. Next update, Alan Green talked about launching on Tuesday. Yep. Some community focused, uh, some community asks were sort of put into it, uh, and then the campaign revamp that we've been talking about uh, a little bit further out. He's showing off a new. Oh, screen. he's showing off the new. Go, 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 go back. Secrets. Oh, secrets. We're not Too many secrets. Too many secrets. Oh yeah, that guy. Spoilers. All right. Well. So not completely, not completely <laughs> done, but almost there. Way to go. <laughs> Still work in progress. Uh, so some quick uh, dungeon keeping uh, as uh, Eric's playing some new stuff. Uh, what's beyond this update? Check the devlog. If you want a summary, Elliot wrote it. It was really great. So there's some great sort of uh, update sneak peeks there. Uh, PS4 update uh, as well. Watch us, stream us, play with us, win with us, support us. So... As always, you can get a lot of giveaways. So we have a giveaway during this dev stream. Yep. Uh, there should be a link in the Twitch chat. We have, we're testing out a new giveaway system, so give us feedback on that. But there's also giveaways on the Friday Fun Stream. There's giveaways for following us on Twitter and retweeting us. There's giveaways for following us on Facebook. Uh, we really are trying our best to give as much as possible away to you guys within reason. Uh, that includes the newsletter. If you sign up for our newsletter, you get de uh, Defender Medals uh, and some giveaways as well. Mm -hmm. So just trying to highlight the fact that there is a lot of free stuff out there, even though our game is free to play as well. Uh, the other thing is, and we finally broke, I'm proud of this, is my baby. Instagram is my baby. Um, and uh, Etheria Tours is working. Are we at a dozen yet? We're not. <laughs> <laughs> we always have more than a dozen. So but, like 13? Uh, or... 13, 14. <laughs> uh, we actually just got more than 200 followers on Instagram, so that's kind of exciting. Uh, so we're posting there. That's happening. Uh, anything else on this uh, giveaways? Oh, uh, the bug reporting fixes are still coming uh, yeah. soon-ish. Uh, Ice is still working on that, so uh, no, Hadad. Hada, uh, 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 and then the last but not least, of course, Three Metal Weekend already up, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hopefully. We if looked at it. It should be there. If we told not, him to flip yeah. the switch. Yeah, we flipped the switch. Good. Eric is saying it's probably we're good. good. We're good. Eric, how are you doing? I wanted to talk to you a little bit more. You doing good? I'm surviving. You're surviving? <laughs> Eric is always <laughs> surviving. Uh, cool. So, actually, we're going to switch from you playing to 
us, our beautiful faces, uh, now that we've talked all that trash, uh, we're going to have a roundtable discussion, which is Woo! sort of the rest of the year. Uh, in, hi, guys. Oh, oh, uh, we're all wearing shorts, right? Yeah, sorry about that. Ooh, uh, my uh, face <laughs> did Oh, Andrian is censored there with the Defenders logo. Uh, <laughs> Java is still Team, in team Instinct. Although, go. so clearly you were not one of the 15 million people that stopped playing. Uh, I have to admit, I jumped on a few times during the week. Me, t- me I too. I caught a Star Me. Star the Me, better Star one? You. The better one. Star You is the first one, oh, Star oh, Me is the next one. I caught a Star Me today. Uh, my Snorlax. I caught a uh, uninstall. Oh, uh, that's all the app. I, 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 I will say, it hurts me. They've been teasing me the whole <laughs> week about the 15 million drop. Because I, I am a Nintendo fanatic, and it hurts my feelings. I don't know. Paula, my two... Anyway. It must, be, it must be my troll blood. <laughs> hey, Benny, I think they're going to be fine. I yeah, know. right. <laughs> I, think they're they're gonna be I don't. I don't know. I was a little worried. Fifteen actually. million people. Mm. Me and Tick, we love you. Send us. There's fifteen million people who <laughs> come over to us. Uh, so here's what we're talking about. We're talking about the next, the year up until 2017. Uh, what's happening with Dungeon Defenders? Because it yeah. seems like this last third is a lot of stuff's going on. So before we get to the rest of the year, let's talk a little bit about what happened. So looking back. Uh, we have Calling on Heroes, Power Up, Power Surge, Molten Citadel, Lava Mancer. Uh, as you guys reflect on the summer of uh, Heroes and Changes. The summer of DD2. The summer of DD2. Uh, what sort of uh, pops for you guys? What, 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 do you, what do you think looking back? Are you, are you proud? Are you, are you happy with where we're at? Are you excited about what's coming? Um, just a little bit of reflection on summer. And even players on Twitch, talk to us about how this summer has been from a, a DD2 standpoint. Well, I guess us managing to actually, we set up this year to make more heroes, and then we ended up actually doing that effectively, and that worked out well. So there's a, there's a bit of pride towards the team that we actually managed to achieve. Yeah, that. four heroes to, four new heroes, four, four you know, original more heroes. on the way, Yeah, maybe even more. So we'll see, we'll see what we, it would be nice to see how many we do by the end of the year. That would be neat. On the hero front, I will say the next heroes that I've heard of at least are, are shockers, not shockers, they're just, Chalkers. Awesome. They're just awesome. Is what I'm, I'm excited for the next two heroes. Jen was like, we keep stop! We keep on saying that. I'm just excited. I'm excited for the next two heroes. Uh, that's an interesting take. Alandrian, maybe even from a player standpoint, how's the summer been? Or you, you transitioned, actually. This summer has been... I know. My summer has been pretty busy yeah. and, like, not filled with gameplay at all. Well. Uh, you know, <clears throat> been trying to play games on a connection that's slower than cell phones, which didn't work out very well for having to patch anything. So my gameplay uh, took a steep dive, okay. however, but in terms of DD2 over the summer, um, honestly, I think it's good that we've started to really add uh, some bigger features that are changing the feel of the game. For instance, like the first really big one, to me anyway, was the game browser. Yeah. That's been something I've been wanting for over a year, mm-hmm. and then we finally you know, are getting that in. The campaign stuff that's coming in, we're starting to kind of round this corner towards having a more finalized looking product and you know a lot of these kind of UI and early user experiences uh, really needed to be done at some point. We had a, a large portion of our players uh, not you know playing very long, getting frustrated early in the game and you know the, the start of the game experience wasn't um, as engaging as it kind of needed to be mm-hmm. and so this was, it was really important that we did this first as kind of a first step towards making a more complete product. And then obviously there's going to be stuff added in for you know continuing players and more hardcore people that you know want a little more a little more meat in their sandwich like I do. Um, <laughs> I mean, but it's true. A little more like I want a couple extra slices of bacon. I got it. When we're playing the game. A little more pearl in your well, oyster. Uh, Is that do oysters have pearls? No, I mean yeah, but. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that one, okay. but anyway. More bacon in your BLT. Right, more bacon in the BLT, man. Okay. There needs to be some more substance in the gameplay, and there's some really cool plans for that in the future, and I'm really excited that I've been you know, able to be privy to that information early, um, but I, I'm really excited for kind of what we have in store that's coming up. You are, you are talking like a producer. I am talking mm-hmm. like a producer. Mm-hmm. It's almost like I was it's hired for that. It's almost like you were hired to be a producer. <laughs> Java, how's the summer been from uh, your take? It's good. 
Yeah. Great. Making heroes. Uh, yeah, and I'll, I'll say uh, it's been. Fun. I, I appreciate you guys letting me sort of come on here and yeah, mess you were, everything you up. Here like a month ago. I was not here a month ago. The dev stream has made some pretty you major changes. You weren't here either. Like a month ago. I was here a month you ago. You were here a month ago. He was You're here a liar. when I came you were in. You were like two months. I have now been here two months. Yeah. Colin was my first friend. I'm still uh, trying. Ever. To, I'm still trying to become <laughs> friends with the dog. It's not working. Uh, but Colin was my first friend. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm proud of the dev stream and where we're taking it. I know that there's a lot of change to consume yeah. at once, but you know we're we're trying to listen to you guys and and make changes and you know while keeping some secrets that we know. If it's all out there, none of it's fun. Uh, so moving to the future, Hadad, with future. your poll of. Awesome um, staff of wisdom. Actually, I was standing there, and I can't not do things with my hands, so I kept messing with Eric. <laughs> so I decided to go grab my staff so that at least I have something between my hands to mess around. Oh, we also say? actually perfectly form like a gradient here, like because you're you're like you're like super <laughs> lame, like, right, right next to the right. extra <laughs> <mic>. <laughs> 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 yeah. darkness. Uh, uh, Adad, mm -hmm. as you think about August to December. For DD2, knowing what we've got in the pipeline, knowing, you know, t factoring in sort of the campaign revamp that's coming pretty soon, but also all the stuff that's coming in the future. In general, where are we going? Uh, what, what's, what's, go what's going on here? And also, you know, part of what we're trying to do here is give the more experienced players a sense for what our vision is so that you know why we're making the decisions that we're making moving ahead. Yeah. So a little, a little context for what DD2 looks like the rest of the year. Well, it feels... Uh feels like we're in this like exciting mad dash. We're trying to get it as complete as possible. One of our goals at some point is to get out of early access. We've been there for a while. It's what? Kind of <gasps> exhausting us. Uh, that? So yeah. that's something we are all kind of pushing towards. But at the same time, there's also a lot of experimentation going on. And it's actually something I'm really also like interested or happy about this year. The team's been like going off doing a bunch of little experiments and we're trying to figure out how to get them in. Uh, the enemy revamp thing, whether or not we do the squad thing, some plans we have for passives, uh, you know, just changing the way the game is structured and potentially some other things down the line so that, you know, we kind of iron out uh, some of the kinks in D2 and let you guys enjoy uh, the things you really love, jumping in the game, playing, challenging yourself, getting good gear, and keeping potentially going and going and going. All the while releasing more and more and more and more heroes because we're down that uh, down that road. To be clear, that's still all in. I mean, and Elliot actually off the bat said the first said you know on his devlog update it literally says yeah we got one we, we got one group of people working on all the things you would expect us to work on and then there's a whole other group of people working on things that you know maybe aren't as apparent. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a lot of people on their spare time trying to do extra things, so it's yeah. pretty exciting. Hopefully, some of that will make its way in. It's kind of like. Uh, I'm a, I'm a marathon runner. I don't know if, like, whatever. I run marathons, and it's kind of like that last five miles, like, where you're, you're like... You're so cool, you Benny. You can see that... <laughs> that I'm so I'm impressed. <laughs> Impress me more. Please. <laughs> That's what I've been trying to do this whole month. <laughs> Landrian. I can't do it. Uh, I am disappointed. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> um, uh, this is what uh, you get for having friends. By yeah, this, I know, this is what I get for having friends. I'm, I'm going back to no friends ever. Uh, Landrian, from uh, if we're wa if someone's watching right now, no, and <laughs> nobody is. Someone's <laughs> watching right now, and they are at the end game. They're sort of in that end game phase. Uh, you're in that headspace. As we look at the next year, what what do they have to look forward to? What do you have to look forward to as sort of that? End game player, especially since you kind of know what's coming. Yeah. Right, I, I do actually probably know more about what's coming than me I should. Me, but uh, oh yeah, for sure. Um, uh, <laughs> 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 I uh, I don't know everything that I can talk about. I can talk about the stuff that Elliot's mentioned for sure, which is uh, there's some ideas about dynamic scaling, um, dynamic kind of difficulty, and. Uh, uh, players scaling throughout the game that he wants to add. There's some s smarter loot stuff that we're trying to figure out and get some better systems in for that. Um, there's some kind of, there's a, we're working on the challenge of the game and getting kind of some sort of unique uh, thing that, I guess I'd call it a hook, some sort of unique hook that keeps people playing, you know, longer than just kind of grinding for the highest eye level tier of right. loot. Like we actually want you to be doing something actively in yeah. the game and actively, you know, like having something to strive for and achieve. Uh, so at, at every step of the at every step of the way, frankly, at every step of the way, yeah. right? Uh, but I just mean, you know, for the end game players, currently the the flow is get seven fifty gear and upgrade it all the way, 
and we'd like it to be a little more in depth than that, yeah. you know, and a little more involved. So you're not just like, oh well, now I can just wreck everything and I have nothing else to do. Yeah. Uh, Java, any thoughts from sort of like uh, art design, UI, streamlining, user experience, uh, banana standpoint? Yeah, you know, all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that you know um, we were thinking about for. Uh, the immediate future is, uh, as Colin mentioned, was uh, getting some smarter loot down. I, I really like the idea of that theme, and we've been talking about revamping inventory, one of our biggest pain points. I would love to try to push that up front and see if we can um, start realizing that idea so that we can manage our inventory a little bit better. Uh, one of the one of the other things is that um, I. I do feel like we've almost neglected PlayStation a little bit because I know that a lot of those flows are not super good on PlayStation or on console, I should say, or in gamepad. Uh, so taking a look at all of that uh, in the immediate future, that, that's what I would be really passionate about and would love to start addressing. Really smoothing out the whole experience in general to being able to add kind of a, another layer of polish to the systems and get them a little less jankity than they are right now. You really like that word. I love jankity. Jankity? I love jankity. Jankity, jank, jank. Jankity. I yeah. like kerfuffle. That's kerfuffle. Ooh, kerfuffle. I, I, I like I, I like Jiminy's. Like Jiminy's? Russell and Jiminy's. I like Jimbly Bimbly. Jimmy's. Jimmy's? Not Jim Jimmy's? Mm -hmm. Never heard Jimmy's. This is like so this not this important. Like <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm gonna redirect us <laughs> here back to Dungeons <laughs> okay. and News. As uh, much as I uh, love Tangent. Be before we move on to community <laughs> questions, uh, uh, Haddad, uh, my new best friend, uh, the more besties right now, um, uh, messaged me earlier this week, and we have some. We have an idea for sort of a new uh, mini stream ah. uh, that is going to be coming soon. Uh, we're calling it uh, Black Tea with Blacksmith. Black with Black Metal. Blacksmith. With Black Metal. He yeah. added that. And part. I added sure. that. I'm not sure if it'll actually. It's, have black it hasn't been approved. I have to grow my hair out. So yeah. we'll need about a year, and then we'll be able to. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so uh, maybe next week, maybe a little pushed out, but it's going to be a half hour of what, Daniel Haddad? Well, uh, there's a lot of people interested in design, and um, a lot of people interested in actually getting into uh, making games, and especially the design side of things. So I thought it would be a good idea to like dedicate like 30 minutes at some point, uh, either answering questions or discussing like why we make certain decisions and like the design process behind them or how we do certain things. So kind of like an exposition into how into certain aspects of design. Uh, we're kind of going to see how it goes. We don't really have a very concrete plan yet. Yep. We imagine there'll be like some things that are well planned in advance, like, oh, this time we're talking about this specifically. Sometimes we'll just be like sitting and talking with you guys, gathering career advice, or we're giving you get career advice and whatnot. So uh, if you're interested in that, you know, yep. hop on the forums, start asking questions, tell us what sort of things you want to hear or find out more about. And yeah, we'll see how that goes. Yell at Benny. Yell at me. Some, I'll oh, be there. I be uh, there the one thing we have confirmed, <laughs> uh, and I'm looking at our new multimedia designer as I'm saying this, is that it will be fancy. There, it, oh, it, yes. it is tea time. So make it sure is, you bring some tea yourselves. It is tea time. It will be Do we need uh, bow ties? Gen gentlemanly. Bow ties? We need bow ties. Things. Coattails. Coattails. Pipes. 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 Ooh, pipes. Mm. Curtains, maybe. Mm. Uh, see, I like that you like to talk about classical fanciness, music. but you don't want to talk about jankiness. Just any anyway. lovely classical music in the background. Uh, some soft Kenny G. Uh, You've just, no. No, <laughs> no Kenny G. No, okay. too sorry, far. sorry. Too much. Uh, <laughs> wrong, wrong genre. Some <laughs> questions. What's happening with the strategic, with the strategic, the strategic. What's, <laughs> what's happening with the strategic revamp? How close is it from being released? Um, it's a bit of ways away. I oh, not say. next week? Uh, <laughs> The full vision for the full vision for strategic what? revamp is still a little bit away. Uh, next week, like like you guys have been seeing, we're releasing the first bit, the campaign part, the campaign restructure. Uh, we're still experimenting with enemies. We have a good bit off of those enemies actually working so far. We have the shield guy and things along those lines. Uh, and whether or not that makes it in or uh, or by when, we're kind of still tentative on. So some things you'll see sooner than uh, later, and some things are still kind of. Working. And to be clear, the campaign revamp is the first step towards, it's, a, it's the foundation for the strategic revamp Absolutely. and the enemy revamp right. and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Uh, all these reimagined vanilla DD1 maps are extremely well done. Booyah, we but we don't stop there. <laughs> Can we expect Aquanos in the future or other Eternia Shards DLC maps? So I think just to spite knows no limits, <laughs> we're never going to do Aquanos and we're never going to do Sharkin. So that's the end of that discussion. Oh, so this next question, Sharkin's can we... 
I mean, just one of the, uh, <laughs> I thought everybody loved the shark. Yeah. <laughs> the enemy revamp actually has something like the shark. Is it like the? Why would you say that? <laughs> because I don't want to be mean to whoever you're being mean to. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> okay. I love Nose Island. It's, it's all good. Bro, bro love. You've got a. You're a little manic today. You're hating. You're loving. You're. I mean. You're a man of emotions. I'm a man of Twitch. You're a man of Twitch. Uh, can we get some timeline or some info on your plans in creating a more in-depth and customizable gear upgrade system? Yes, it's coming. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's part of the uh, big push. I think, did Elliot talk about it? I'm not sure. It's mm -hmm. all speaking tentatives. Uh, it's something we're kind of thinking uh, long and hard about. It's, it requires that loot, the growth of enemies, the type of enemies you're fighting, all that stuff is in place. And it's like the, fi it's like the icing on the cake, right. uh, that final layer of progression. So um, it's going to be a little, bit, uh, a little ways away. Uh, but it is something that we absolutely want to do. We don't really like where item enhancement is kind of boring. It's very similar to what uh, we were talking about earlier. Uh, it's not really very fun. We want to give you more things to go for, more things to try for. So just yep. And to be clear, part of our goal here in the next couple of weeks, uh, and from a communication standpoint, uh, marketing, whatever you want to call that, is we want to give you guys a, you know, a, a bit of a clearer vision uh, on this. So this is sort of the first step. Elliot's sort of devlog is one of the first steps. We want to really make sure that, you know, when you have these questions, you can go somewhere and you can see sort of like what we're planning. Uh, yeah, so that is also coming. That's not a game thing, but that's uh, Benny talking. Yeah, so in the future, we're just focusing on new players and never on end game players, right? <laughs> that's what we're doing. It's good to segment our yeah. player yeah. bases. Probably that's our goal. Yeah. Also, to mistreat our loyal fans. I yes, mean, mistreat the loyal fans. The loyal I think that's the theme of the next dev stream. That's what we've been doing. That's wrong. that is. Actually <laughs> they stuck with us throughout early access, and now we're going to dump them. Uh, God, watch that. That's going to be the quote. It's going to be it. Gonna be a, uh, here's what I. Here's what I'll say to. to just because my heart hurts right now, <laughs> uh, is there have been things that Ice um, has literally said we need to scrub that from the devlog. So there are secrets, there are things happening, yep. multiple things that are, you know, some treats there. Uh, any plans to introduce additional item rarity quality tiers past legendary that won't have guaranteed drop rates at the end of every map? There, uh, there was something that Elliot proposed and we were kind of working on it. Um, if you remember when we released the first armor set, that was kind of a small experiment. We wanted to do it then, uh, but we decided uh, against it at the last minute because to be honest, the armor set was uh, done on like off time, on like in uh, personal time. We didn't really have the time to flesh out a whole new tier, but it's something that we are uh, very interested in. Also, in either reducing or giving a reason to have tier one through tier four. Mm -hmm. Tier five is still okay. Tier six is what you're always going for. And then if we add something above that, what's that going to mean? Okay. So we need to also figure out what you're doing with tier one through tier five-ish. Okay. And that. Uh, oh, what the answer there is what's better than legendary is Elandrian. Yeah, I right. mean, but obviously. Oh, sorry. But actually, just on a more serious note, uh, they've actually beefed up some of the early loot in this campaign revamp that's coming to make it a little more significant, and you're not just getting like trash all the time as you're progressing, uh, which is one of the changes that's coming with the campaign revamp. So there have been a little bit of like loot quality of life stuff thrown in there. Okay. Um, but yeah, so it's cool that those changes are starting to get in. Uh, I'm going to keep on jamming on these questions because I love that they're actually kind of in theme. Uh, are there any plans to remove, reduce the rigidity uh, of each map's currently listed eye power range boxes? From what I understand, the current map-based eye power system makes it so that it is literally impossible to see any drops rewards outside of the map's listed eye power range. Yes, and there's some designs with some of the scaling and stuff that we're talking about and uh, working on that Elliot's proposed. Yep. Um, probably can't say more than that. Okay. Uh, a major theme across topics in the forums right now is passes on items and the item revamp. What are your opinions on removing passives from the items uh, and either introducing those effects to spheres or creating augmentable items where augments are the passives that got removed uh, and can be upgraded by playing? Uh, so there's a lot of things that we like in theory about passives and there's a lot of things that in practice are not working with passives uh, we don't really want to throw them out and just give you skill spheres uh, because if you if you think about it uh, if if you're just pursuing loot or in a loot based game the fact that you're just getting higher numbers is not exactly as entertaining as figuring out how to get those numbers combined with certain things combined then with spheres it just gives you that extra dimension of uh, customization that we want to hold on to 
Uh, and I've said this many times on the stream also a lot, that we do want to do something with the passive system because we're not very happy with it. Whether it involves uh, allowing Say you that to... Say that one more time. <laughs> we do, we do kind of want to do something with the passive system because we're not at all happy with it. Thank you. Uh, but uh, if that means some sort of way for you to empower those passives, to take a passive from a weapon and then put it on something else, um, if that means reducing the number of passives, uh, we've, we've like talked a lot about things like each piece of gear only has one passive, but that passive has you know, a cluster of things about it. We've been doing the, each passive has multiple things about it for a while now, and we kind of like where that's going, so that's potentially something we can do. Uh, so there are some things we want to do with passives. Uh, it's just a matter of figuring, it, figuring out how to get it all to connect really well. Uh, cool. Finally, a question I can answer on my own. Uh, will we see hero development slow down so that other areas of the game currently struggling and get much needed love? Some huge ones being balance, the item system, passes, fears, and onslaught. Yes, <laughs> that's actually what this whole sort of stream was about, and a lot of this week was about, you know, uh, we are entering that phase, but what's cool about it is even though we're entering that phase where we're sort of starting to look at all these other things, we are still releasing maps, we are still releasing heroes, uh, they are a little further out, but those, that, that cadence is still happening, uh, unless I spoke out of turn, no? Yeah? The cadence is going to remain the same. Actually, the, I think... I think we're not shifting focus necessarily from the heroes, but we're designing them and doing them a little bit smarter so that we can do them alongside. Also, at also this point, been, we've done like four heroes. Yeah, we've done so four of them so far, so we're kind of getting better at it. Yeah. Yeah, I hope. Now the Mystic Explorer then takes like a month to make <laughs> overdue. I hope she doesn't explode. Uh, are you guys going to bring back monthly pets or put them in the shop soon? Man, what are we doing? Well, we have talked a lot about what we want to do with pets. Right now, what are we doing with pets? Not much. Uh, very similar to the passive system, we are waiting until we get like the first bits of the game in a good spot, and then we're going to transition to enhancement, passives, pets, and then on top of that, we'll take it from there. Uh, know that we're running late, so I'll get the last two questions real quick. Uh, lightning round, two lightning questions. Round. Uh, do you have any intention of working on Heroes tab? Yeah. Yes. Uh, when we have 18 to 20 plus characters, the list lags a lot. It's always yeah. long and it's not yes. user friendly. Yes. yes. Cool. Uh, are there any plans to increase the level cap of heroes, either slightly or significantly? Those are the two options. In the future. Yes. Uh, and if so, will the harder difficulties reward more XP so that we don't have to sacrifice yes. loot farming? Did you say two XP? questions? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> There's okay. interesting things coming to address that. Okay. Yes to all. Okay. 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 All the things. Okay. 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 Yes. Yay. Okay. We're done. Hooray. We're done. Uh, so, thank oh. you for... Wait. You, yay! yay. yay. <laughs> <laughs> you love confetti, John. <laughs> Look how happy John is. He's never been happier. Well, I, I was waiting for that one. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was uh, did you have something before I sign off? For those of you who expect a 5 o'clock stream on Fridays, beware that we might change the time uh, a little bit to better accommodate those who are getting off of work and maybe can't catch a stream so just just catch up with us next week and, and make sure that the time uh, the time is right for you guys yeah my goal is eventually that I'm slowly transitioning this dev stream to like a cooking show so like slowly but surely no we're that's moving, not happening slowly but surely I'm all about that we're moving to uh, and remember we're going to have a new stream with the 30 uh, with, with Adad and T and fanciness uh, 3 Middle Weekend is up now uh, visit our social properties for giveaways uh, there is a patch coming out on Tuesday it's got a lot of community focused community asked for uh, features uh, check our devlog check our website for uh, uh, information on the campaign revamp uh, yeah and, and the sweet Hunwich skin. And this, oh my god. That's coming out on Tuesday. We didn't even talk about that. That was your job. That wasn't my job. My he job was Endgame stuff. He said, what is there's going a on? Sweet, oh, it was my job. There is a sweet Hunwich skin It's the sweet vampire hunter Gunwich skin. Yeah. She's that we've shown Buffy a little bit before. the Gunwich. It's awesome. Yeah. Huntwich. 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 Uh, yeah, so that's coming as well on Tuesday. Campaign review below before that. Friday fun stream, probably, likely, maybe, no? Hopefully. Hopefully on Friday. Uh, giveaways there, giveaways when yep. we have we talk game development. Giveaways all giveaways over the place. All around, giveaways from the Casters Guild streamers. We love you. Woo -woo. Have a great Friday. Uh, at least I love you. Uh, and thanks for joining us. And one last up. Uh, uh, we're done. Success. <laughs>